And I'm going to talk a little bit about um, HCT, which is a campaign that is going on, and we are launching it in, in KZN. And you, as you all know, that KZN happens to, to be the mother of epidemic, both HIV and TB, where we brew what we call an XTR, which is a unique problem to South Africa to have a TB epidemic that is not treatable or that is hard to treat. What is H HCT? It is a national comprehensive uh, campaign that addresses a lot of epidemics where we are going to be looking at screening for HIV as people come to the clinics. Where we go to Barra, they have to be actually offering you, the healthcare professionals are supposed to be offering you HIV testing, TB screening, they have to talk about maternal and infant under five years uh, mortality problems. They also have to talk about hypertension and, 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 and diabetes problem. They also have to include in their, in their conversation with us, they have to also talk about heart diseases. It is a healthcare provider-driven initiative. It promotes public-private pri partnership, which is something that the, the government hasn't been focusing on or as a Department of Health we haven't been focusing on in the past. However, having said that, we understand that when you go to Barra, you don't really get to see a lot of excited healthcare professionals who are ready to offer you anything. If you go to Edendale Hospital where we work in the, private, in the public sector, you don't get to see a counselor that is excited. Yay, I'm excited, I'm gonna offer you a visit. I wanna help you to do this and that with your life. We don't get healthcare professionals like that. And yet in South Africa, we have been designing these programs that are healthcare driven, which limits our uh, ability to be able to provide anything that's going to be of benefit. 40 million living with HIV, this was, this was way back in 2006. The reason why I quoted the stats from 2006, it is because the section that we are speaking under actually talks about the old challenges, the old problem. HIV has been a challenge for more than three decades. And up until this point, we haven't figured out what to do with it. Because we haven't actually even suggested, or we haven't actually looked at the ways that we're supposed to be tapping into, which means getting involved as South Africans as individuals, and also starting to think outside of the box and looking at programs that are not going to be depending on the skills we do not have. Doctors, nurses, skills that are short in South Africa. HR, uh, HR crisis is a thing that is a problem in South Africa, and yet all our programs are designed around people who can never be able to deliver because of the shortage or because of the lack of skill. We have ARV programs that are based in centralized hospitals where people cannot get into them. We have HIV testing that has been for free in clinics where people are just not interested in going to be tested by the auntie who lives next door because they will be talking about your HIV positive or negative results. So we design programs and we, it's like we're designing from Geneva for South Africans. We design programs that do not speak to what our challenge is and do not speak to the culture and what we need as South Africans. Which is why I am excited to have Ted Soweto starting here because this is a conference or an event or, event or a platform where we are going to be discussing HIV on a different level, at a non-traditional way where we're going to be saying HIV is caused by a virus. No, we have to look at what other interventions can we look at in terms of uh, bringing something that is new and different to address the problem that is unique and uniquely for South Africa because for three decades we haven't been able to master it. If you go to a typical hospital, this is what you're going to be seeing. 50 to 80% of people who are admitted in the wards in South Africa have AIDS. And also on that note, you have 40% of people admitted in the wards who have TB. Despite the fact that they came with hypertension and everything else, but their other underlying problem is HIV and it is AIDS. And up until this point, we haven't figured out what we need to do about that. When we were coming up here this morning, Israel asked me, uh, do you think we are close to a cure? What do you think the, the answer to that question may be? Are we close? We are not close. Because you can imagine how much money are the pharmaceutical companies making for providing antiretrovirals for people like myself. Imagine in Soweto or in Umlazi where I come from, where you will find a person who is selling or giving out a pill that will make everybody don't, not to take alcohol. Do you think the people who sell alcohol will be happy about that? 
No. So therefore, nobody is going to be able to come to a point where we are finding a cure because providing antiretrovirals means billions of cash. And therefore, we are never going to be any close to anything that competes with people who are making money out of the diseases. So we are just very far from it. Now, the, the question might be, then how are we going to, to deal with it? My own, my own solution and what I have understood in the past is that um, to put an end to HIV, it will require individual participation because for me, HIV has been for nine years under control and I live like somebody who has no HIV. I live a very perfect life because I decided for my health, there is no doctor who will know more than I know. And for my uh, participation in making sure that nobody gives me wrong pills, nobody gives me pills that are going to shape me in a different way, I participate very strongly. And whoever that is going to engage in my treatment and my care better know what they're talking about. Because the, we, need an, we need a level of that participation and understanding of the disease in order for us to be able to control it, in order for us to be able to put it behind our backs and look at other things that are important for us to deal with. HIV and, 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 and TB infections, we haven't been talking about any decreases in the numbers. You watch it. Next year we will be talking at TED about the new HIV rates after 2010. Because people, when they get excited, they forget what other dangers we are at. They will forget about HIV, they will all be excited, and they will be generous with everything else in their life. And therefore, we will be talking of new numbers, because nobody will be thinking HIV is still there, which is something that we have to be actively engaged, actively know in our head that no matter how excited we are, we can never be excited enough to give away your life for a five-second joy or excitement. South Africa accounts for 7% of the world's population. Yet we, have, we account for 17% of the, of the global HIV epidemic, or the HIV burden, 17%. It is where it is at, particularly in South Africa. And where I come from is the home of everything that goes wrong in KZN. It is MDRTB, MDR is brewed by healthcare professionals. It is made by us. So we can never even blame God, say, God, why, why are you not doing anything about it? Because we make these kinds of things. And sooner we will be talking about XTR HIV. XTR HIV will mean that a lot of people will be dying because we wouldn't be having treatment for it because we, sh we are short of current treatment for the, the easier things, for the, for the uncontaminated viruses that we have. We are launching this campaign on the foundations that we have 25% of South Africans who know their HIV status, yet testing is free. 25%. A few months ago, it was like 5%, 25%. You will think in South Africa, everybody will be rushing for testing. Irrespective of whether you see symptoms and signs or you, you might be worried, even if, just for the virtue of the fact that we live in South Africa, everybody should be testing every three months. However, we just don't like that fact. We are looking at, uh, we are blanketing this campaign on failing prevention programs. You can imagine if we have adopted ABC as a prevention strategy, which is good because it is something. But in a, when it is competing with a culture that it is okay to be faithful to seven wives, bring them all to clinic, we will discuss this matter with all of them, or maybe abstaining and it is competing with a government that provides some kind of payment for people who are having children. If we're getting into grants and we are calling that a career, because children, a 13-year-old, if you work in a hospital, you really get to see this thing. 13-year-olds getting pregnant just because they want to get a 290 rands grant. We have that, that kind of a prevention strategy. It does not speak to us. It doesn't speak to our culture. It is not good. good. It is competing with a lot of things that we set up as human beings, not to blame a government or whoever, but all of us as South Africans, we contribute to that because if it happens, we never challenge it. And I believe at TED, this is where we are going to be talking and challenging and discussing other ways at which we can intervene. Need access capacity. For these people who need antiretrovirals, only 10% of those can access it, even if we can all test. 
10% will be able to access it because it is a doctor-driven model, doctor-driven programs, and we always have shortages of doctors. And these programs are based at hospitals, and people live in rural areas, and they can never access it at the hospital. We want to decentralize, we want to talk about a program where treatment will be decentralized to where people are at in order for us to be able to, to do something that is better. Long-standing of history of healthcare professional-driven programs. Have you ever been in the hospital where you are told that that is the pharmacy window, and when you get to the pharmacy window, they're going to tell you what to do? Irrespective of whether you can or cannot do it, they're going to tell you, take this pill three times a day. You're not available three times a day. You're only available two times a day in order for you to take this pill. But the, the, the models that we have been working with says the healthcare professional decides what we have to do because we have decided we will never we are not going to be participating as, as human beings, as individuals. You find people who are admitted at hospitals who leave the hospital without even knowing what was their diagnosis. What is the treatment? How are they treating you? If you ask our grannies, our mothers, our aunties, our own youth have no idea when they come out of the hospital what is it that has been wrong with them. These are the kinds of people that we are and that we are agreeing to be. Demotivated with limited staff, we are talking about those, those, those kinds of people. If you are working in health, you understand that they are compensation, rural health, this, they're getting this money and that money. For those healthcare professionals who did not get that compensation, they're not excited to offer any VCT to anybody. They are told that counselors are supposed to see only five, eight people per day, they get to see 20. Imagine when you are the 20th person coming for VCT or for HIV testing, are you going to be getting an excited counselor saying, I'm going to help you sort out your life? It will never happen. If we're still going to be having only relying on things that are driven by people who are demotivated, people who are not excited about providing the service. And as South Africans, we do bend into allowing and accepting a service that is, uh, is of suboptimal standard. HIV testing in South Africa is everywhere, even it is written even on the, on the, on the trees, you can test anywhere if you like. It is, it is free. But the question is, why are people not accessing it? I remember when I, I presented at a retroviral, 11th retroviral conference in Boston in 2005, I had just started antiretrovirals three years uh, prior to that. And there was, a, there was an article in the Boston Globe that talked about Africans will never be able to be on antiretrovirals and be sustained because they don't know time. They didn't trust us with that. But we have proven to them that we can and we are doing it better than Americans. Americans can never adhere to anything called a regimen. Here we can be able to sustain. And for me and many people, we, I have been on antiretrovirals for nine years and I haven't missed anything. I'm African. Maybe I don't know time, maybe I do, but I do take my drugs. And I've proven to be better than most people who were doubting that. There are studies that shows that um, <clears throat> self-test kit, people can use it. They can, they, can, they can use it and it is feasible and it is the way, the, the direction we should be going. So if we, we, the question is, with this campaign that we're launching, will it, be, will it succeed if we're going to blanket it on top of already not existing or not functional uh, foundations? If it is going to succeed, South Africans and healthcare professionals will need to change the way at which we provide service. In conclusion, we have spoken a lot about participating, and this is my plea to South Africans that it is time that each and every one of us participates for your own benefit, for your own safe, for your own sake, and for your own health. In that way, that is when we can put an end to HIV, because Vaccine is not coming, and pharmaceutical companies are not interested in not making money anytime soon. Thank you.